Hi, this is Mike back with another Python tutorial for you. And this time around, we're going to cover the subject of strings. Now, strings are basically any kind of text that you want to process whilst um, doing some kind of programming with the Python language. Now, what do we mean by a string? Well, a string, like I said, is any text that you can have. So um, we can define a string in the system by using the single or double quotes. So double quotes look like that. Single quotes look like that. So we'd use them by saying um, this is a string, for instance. And as you can see, it becomes a string in there. It displays it with single quotes, obviously, but that's because inside it, once it's actually declared inside of Python, it just needs to know that it is a string and doesn't differentiate between the, the double quotes. I'll show you later what the double quotes actually are useful for, and they're actually part of something. Um, this is a little bit special, so we'll we'll come to that in a minute. But let's say that we wanted to declare a string using the single quotes. That's allowed too. It just basically is a way of marking out which which part of this this particular uh, line of program is actually a string and which is not. So with that, what else can we do? Well, there's also the the whole idea of being able to assign a string to a variable. So um, we can make a variable called some text and make it equal to that string and then from then on we have a string that contains or a variable that contains a string we can also then um, print strings so we can print uh, some text we can also print variables that contain text so whilst this string says or rather I'll just get rid of that this string actually says this is some text this is an actual reference to the variable name that we set up here so we can demonstrate that's different by saying something different in the text to make it obvious that that's not the same. Okay, so we can handle text, but then what else can we do with strings? Well, we can uh, manipulate them. So um, we can then um, replace something so in our text, if we've got um, a string with the word hamster in it, we can actually use um, the replace function on there. Now notice I've done a dot just here. This string um, is actually an object inside of Python, which means that it's not just a, a piece of memory that contains some letters. It actually gets associated with the ability to actually manipulate that information as well. So it becomes a bit more than that. It gets tied to a, a set of functions that actually allow you to manipulate that string too. And one of them is this replace method. So we can replace hamster with something else. Um, the word fish, maybe. And then that would give us the string output. So what we did there is we took the word or the string like that and we then applied its replace method and substitute hamster for fish. If you want to see this in a different way, we can assign um, the string to a variable. So um, 
our string let's call it equals that and currently our string equals that but then we can use the replace method to put something else in place and we're simply just chopping out that particular section that matches with the replace and then we're putting the replacement in there as well so in both cases in the case of our string above just here that's classed as an object inside of python although temporary because we don't store it inside of a variable so once we've used it it's gone however if we then apply it or save it into this string variable here we get to keep a, a, a handle on it using our variable name and then we can use the same replace method later here to affect whatever's inside of that particular variable in addition we can add strings to each other so say we have um, one string called uh, hello and we can add it to the string world and that gives us the hello world we can also uh, insert variables inside of strings now this is one that you should be careful of because you need to be careful of what you're doing or where you're putting things so with this string we've got here we've got hello then a percentage and s and that's our way of telling python that this string we expect to have something inserted into this place and we're expecting to see a string inserted in there so then the way that we tell python what to actually put in there is we use the percentage symbol again and then we follow it with what exactly we want to put in there so for instance in this case we want to put um, hamster world and that should give us the string hello hamster world now say we wanted to insert two things into there we could then use a second placeholder in here but because we've actually started to go into two variables inside of a string we have to start using brackets around these things that we're putting in here and then we need to separate whatever's in there with commas so we've now said these are two placeholders here and they should get replaced by this first value and this second value which we've caught we've uh, encapsulated in the brace the brackets oh. and then we've separated by a comma and then that should then hopefully insert those into there one small thing you can do with um, strings is you can multiply them as well now to multiply them you must have an integer so say we have um, the word goat and we want to multiply it by 2 we get the output of goat goat if we put a space in there we obviously get that if we did that 20 times it just multiplies the word over and over and over again um why you'd want to use that um i don't know because it's not really very practical but it's there if you want to do it and it just basically shows you how powerful python is at manipulating things like text um you can do all number of things with that now finally um you can actually dive into uh, a string and pull out different sections
Now, what do we mean? Well, we've got our string variable from before, which is a string with the word hamster in it. Um, we can tell how long that is by using the len method. And it tells us that it's 36 characters long. Now, say we wanted to pull out the word width in there, um, we could potentially um, try to just trundle along and see if we could um, pull it out one at a time. Or we can use a powerful feature of Python, which is to index into the string. So what do we mean by index? Well, if we can work out what positions and letters the string or the word with occurs in that string, then we can then pull out that section. Now, first of all, let's work out what the position is for the letter W in there. So we've got um, in here one, then a space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine positions in from there. We use these square brackets and put the word the number nine in there. That gives us W. If we want to pull out more than one letter at a time, we need to put an extra argument on there, which is that we put this colon in. And then how many other letters do we need? Well, we've got four from nine, so I'd say 13 is a guess. And as you can see, it pulls out letters 9 to 13, which is the whole word with. If we were to extend that to something like 17, it gives us with the, because it pulls out even more. Another interesting feature is that we can actually pull out the last five characters if we need to. So minus five would give us the last five and the reason for that is because if you use that minus it will go backwards but also uh, reset the current letter so if we were to presume that the current letter was right at the beginning right here at this position that would be zero so if we count back minus one that's before the string but Python knows to reset back. So that actually resets us back to this T. Minus two sets us back to I. Minus three to the space in between. Minus four to the N. And then minus five to this I character. So let's have a look and see what happens. That gives us I. So, <clears throat> as you can see, we can step back from the end of an array, or sorry, of a string, by putting in the characters as a minus value. So if you're wanting one single character out of a string, it's possible to go from the beginning of the string and count forward from there. Or it's possible to step back from the end of the string by doing a minus number. Okay, so that's the very basics of how to use strings and how you can pull values out of them, how you can construct them using other variables and other strings. Um, I hope you found that uh, interesting and that you learned a lot from that. And if you did, then uh, please click the, click the like button. And also, if you want to know more about the Python language and you want to see the next episode in the series, then click the subscribe, subscribe button and you'll get a notification as soon as that comes available. Thanks for watching.